All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the League Express podcast. My name is Jake Keenan, and joining me as always is the editor of League Express, Martin Sadler. And Martin, we've had another weekend full of rugby league action. <laughs> yes, uh, a few, both sides of the world. Yeah, that's right. And uh, a few upsets as well uh, up here in the north. Um, Cass got their first win, which was great to see. Which was surprising uh, to most people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we will get into that shortly. We've got uh, this month's edition of the Rugby League World magazine on our desk, and uh, this week's edition of the League Express paper. Um, a reminder to our viewers, if they do want to snag themselves a copy of either of these, head along to totalrl.com forward slash shop. Yes. Um, and you can, get it either, you can get either the print version or the digital version for both, both, uh, bo- both publications. So, yes, both well worth reading. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get to uh, some of the content that you will um, see in both those editions a bit later in the podcast. But um, let's get straight into the matches, mate. Um, we had Catlin's... Uh, Ah, sorry, yeah, Catlin's defeated the Saints 14-8. to um, What did you make of, of this performance, Mark? I thought that game, along with the Saints-Wigan game a week earlier, was probably the game of the season so far. Mm. None of us knew really until, you know, quite near the end who was going to win it. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the I, I thought Saints were going to win it, actually, for, for quite a long period of, of that game. But they just run out of steam late on, didn't they? And um, it was a fabulous performance by the Catalans in front of their own fans. And, you know, the atmosphere at the ground really looked to be tremendous. And, uh, you know, it, we, we've... Uh, what was interesting about this game was, was, was for me, the, the, the idea that some people are saying, well, there's a split in Super League now into at least three divisions. There's There's the first division, which was consisting of... Wigan and St Helens, which we which we saw, you know, from that um, from 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 that game on Good Friday, mm. and a lot of people were saying, "Well, are Catalans in the first division, or are they with that group of teams below that high level?" And I think they did show on on um, Saturday that it is a three horse race, isn't it? Really, mm. not a two horse race. It's a three horse race. The Catalans are really there competing at their very best. And the great thing about it was, from their point of view, that they had players in key positions who were all French players. And I think that's so important because I've, I've talked about that in my League Express column this week. You know, they had... Obviously, Jordan Abdul went off after about 10 minutes playing at halfback for them. And once he went off... They had Arthur Morg at full back. They had um, César Rouget and Theo Farge at half back. They had Alrix de Costa um, in for the um, absent Mickey McElorum at Luca, and of course Benjamin Garcia at loose forward. Now you know that's that's a great sign for French rugby league. I think mm. that they can beat St Helens with five French players in such key positions, mm. and I, you know I, I would love to see that you know, development extend to the French national team where the French national team could be, you know, competitive in the way that the Catalans Dragons are, you know, with so many French players now. Um, We'll hopefully see that at the end of June when England supposedly go to Toulouse to play France, Mm. although that's still not been confirmed as we speak. Um, But it's it's a real great prospect. No, absolutely. And um, to lose Abdul so early and then sort of trail behind Saints for majority of the game, come back late, uh, I guess it's it's a credit to uh, their ability to um, perform under pressure and and fill those um, gaps when they do lose important players and oh, yes. yeah, great signs for McNamara's team going forward. Well, the key thing the key thing in rugby league is you always have to be able to replace top players who get injured Mm. you know it's a squad game it's not a team game it's a squad game and you've got to have a squad that allows you to put in players you know who can play at you know not far below the level of the players they're replacing Mm. if you're going to remain competitive throughout the season and that was you know a great thing that the uh, that the Catalans did I'm, I'm quite sure that Saints would have been quite probably still carrying the scars a bit of that win against Wigan the week before, you know, they, they would have struggled to recover from that. But, you know, and, and, and wasn't there an absolutely wonderful tackle in this game when Arthur Morg tackled Lewis Dodd over the line and somehow stopped him from putting the ball down? Mm. Um, it was an incredible tackle. Um, and, you know, Arthur Morg is developing into a really great 
full back, I think. Mm. Being able to pull off tackles like that, it's um, it's tremendous. And also, of course, he's not a bad goal kicker either. So, mm. um, you know, if, 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 if Lewis Dodd had scored that try, I think St. Helens would have won it. And it's one of those things that we overlook with fullbacks these days. We always marvel at their attacking prowess, but, you know, it's the, the defensive decisions that they make and those cover uh, try-saving tackles they make that you know, almost make them... Uh, no doubt know, about it. It's a more yeah. important part of their game. Um, now, I've almost shot myself in the foot here by going uh, in reverse chronological order with the games, but we'll keep on going. Uh, we also had Huddersfield, 56, defeated Hull FC, 22, uh, 22. A bit of a thrashing for Hull FC again. Well, I think that's the third game out of four in which they've conceded 50 points, you know, and the, the, the pressure is... is all on um, Tony Smith, isn't it? Mm. And Adam Swift, their former player, former Hull winger last season, he scored three tries um, in the first half for, for Huddersfield, who were, you know, ahead, what was the score at half time? 40 points to 10. I mean, that was just ridiculous, really. Mm. Um, and the funny thing is that I thought the um, some of the Hull players probably played better with the ball in their hands than they've done for a while. You know, I thought Franklin Pele had... One of his better games, for example, he he carried the ball. I thought really well, mm. and of course they also had a young man um, making his starting debut at um, at halfback, young uh, Jack Charles, um, and I thought he had a really good game uh, mm. in, in 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 attack for Hull. It wasn't the Hull attack. I mean, Hull scored twenty two points, so it wasn't their attack that was the problem. But you know, they just. Um, they, 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 their defence just seems nowhere, doesn't mm. it? I mean, the, in the report in League Express today, you know, the, the, the first try for Huddersfield came in the first minute from Adam Swift, and it came from a really great break by, I think it was Matty English. Um, and the report in League Express said it was like the Red Sea opening, yeah. you know, when, when he went through, where were the defenders? Mm. And it must be desperate for... You know, Tony Smith, obviously under pressure as a coach with that sort of performance. And, and it must be depressing being a le- uh, being an old fan at the moment because, mm. you know, there's no obvious sign that that any of this is going to change. I mean, Tony Smith will probably make some changes um, next time they play. Fortunately for, for him, they're not playing this weekend because they're already out of the Challenge Cup. Mm. But, um, you know, you wonder, you know, how how can such a big club have sunk to such a low level, you know, that where the defence looks, you know, absolutely clueless, unfortunately. One of the things I picked up was their defence out wide. There was a few try scoring uh, opportunities where Huddersfield were, they, they had the, the numbers, um, Hull, F- Hull FC had the numbers in the defensive line, but they were just grabbing at the player. They yes. weren't making solid contact. They weren't no. making their one-on-ones. And uh, yeah, it just really No, and Swift, defense. I mean, you know, Huddersfield threw the ball around a lot, didn't they? And, mm. and they realised they could, you know, uh, puncture the whole defence either in the middle or on the edges. And um, you know, Adam Swift, who who I think is a really fine winger. You know, yeah. he. Um, I, I've always wondered why Adam Swift has not had more recognition. Actually, because mm. you know his uh, his name betrays his um, ability, doesn't it? Swift mm. by name and Swift by nature, I suppose. And um, I've always rated him very highly. But he, he, his career actually started at St Helens. And um, a few years ago, he got injured at a very unfortunate time. And Regan Grace, who was, uh, you know, a youngster at the time, came in and, and grabbed his spot and did extremely well and and, and, and then kept that spot. And um, Adam had to leave St. Helens to go somewhere else to, to get first team rugby. And uh, he was doing that with, with, with Hull for several years. But And I've always rated him incredibly highly. And uh, I thought his performance on on Saturday just just demonstrated that Mm. once more. No, definitely. Um, Moving on to the next matchup, we had Hull KR, 50 defeated London 10, a bit of a training run for Kingston Rovers. Well, London scored the first try, you know, and you thought, my goodness, is something going to happen here? But no. Um, And and they are down. I mean, you know, they are... um, Mike Mike Eccles is is, um, saying that they're down to their last 17 players at London. Um, I mean, in 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 a way, uh, you know, when I when they won that game in Toulouse to gain promotion last year, I thought at the time it was going to be a mixed blessing for them. Mm. I mean, it was a great performance to to get that win, and you know, it was it was it was good to see them 
doing so well at the time. But, you know, th that victory combined with the IMG grading system has made their task a thankless one in mm. Super League this year. They've not been able to recruit players of the right quality. But they've got some, I mean, they, they do have some players who I quite like, but they just haven't got a... Um, a, a, a squad that, that that can compete, and when you add some really unfortunate injuries, you know, young Bill Leyland, who was su such a promising player, getting an ACL injury, and that keeps him out for the year. Mm. It's just you know bad luck, and um, it's it's tragic really, and it, it's not doing rugby league in London a great deal of good. I mean, they've got a marvelous little stadium they play in, they've got good relations apparently with with Wimbledon. AFC Wimbledon, whose stadium it is, and they've they've drawn some, you know, reasonable crowds in their first few home games, but they need to get some players. I mean, I suppose it's loan players they need. They've they've they had Harvey Making, I think, playing for them from from Wigan um, at, um, at at the weekend, uh, or did they? I'm I'm not quite so sure, but um, you know, they they actually just need more like that, don't they? And you wonder, you know, where, where do they go from here, really? Mm. And there was an interesting article on League Express this week uh, talking about some of the comments um, Eccles made regarding getting loan players. It's, it's a lot harder for a player to come and play Absolutely. a few weeks in London when they've got a young family at home. They can't exactly, you know, uproot their family or, or relocate to London for a month or two months. You know, whether it be a longer term loan as well, where it's the rest of the season, it's a long time to move your family or be away from your family. So then they unfortunately don't really have much luck in that loan market either, do they? So, no, they don't, no. Um, and with no future in Super League next season, um, you can't really blame players for wanting to um, go and play for London. No. Um, it's just disappointing, really, isn't it? Like, <laughs> there's not much they can do about it. and No, and they're not getting much help from anybody else. That's no. the point. You know, they're, they're, they're really doing it alone. It's a, it's a testing year for them. And I, I really, my heart goes out to them, actually. My, you know, mm. I feel really sorry for London because they've been... Th thrust into a really difficult position. Mm, no, definitely. Uh, we'll move on to the next matchup. So we had Warrington, 34 defeated Leeds, 8. Uh, a bit of a statement win for Sam Burgess' men. Well, Sam Burgess is now being linked with a return to South Sydney, uh, you know, in some quarters in Australia. I think he'd yeah. be foolish to do that. I mean, I, I don't know what the future holds, and we'll probably talk about the NRL, but, mm. you know, I don't know what the future holds for Jason Dimitri at, um, at South Sydney. But... Um, I think Sam, you know, may well... I mean, it, it's turning out well for Sam, and it's great to see. I'm delighted for him and for Warrington. Um, but I think he needs to get one or perhaps two years of experience coaching Warrington before thinking about heading back to to the NRL. And if I were him, I wouldn't go to South Sydney, mm. uh, having said that. But, yes, it was a great win for, 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 for Warrington. Um, Leeds were... Um, outplayed, sadly, hammered by eight points to 34 in front of their own fans. Um, we talked about a great tackle, didn't we, in the Catalans game? And there was another one in this game as well, because, um, you know, Ash Handley was uh, dashing down the wing from inside his own half, looking like, like a <clears throat> probable scorer. Mm. And then um, Matty Ashton turns up from the other wing, running diagonally down the field and manages to um, catch him and nail him just before the try line. And a magnificent cover tackle mm. by by Matty Ashton. And, uh, you know, what a that, that sort of shows, you know, the other side of being such a a, a fast mobile winger doesn't it you, you, you're not there just to score tries <clears throat> but you're also there to make those cover tackles you know where your you know opponents are, are, are breaking in the way that Ash Handley did and, and I would have put my money on Ash Handley to score that try yeah. but what a magnificent tackle and that really spurred on the um, Warrington team to, to, to win the game and yeah. there's another incident in that game as well that I thought is is is, is worth commenting on and it was the Paul Momorowski, um disallowed try for a double movement, which, you know, I, I think this this whole law... I mean, I've, I've written a, an article in uh, this month's Rugby League World, my final whistle article, about rule changes that we ought to make. 
And one of the first ones that I would change is the double movement rule. In my view, if a player can get the ball down over the line, even if his elbow has been on the floor before the line, that try should stand unless the referee is called held Mm -hmm. by that point. In which case, let that player just play the ball. At the moment, we get a player coming to a, a, a halt or potentially a halt and just putting his arm over the line, he then gets penalised for doing that. I think that's the harshest bloody penalty mm. that you can imagine in, in, in rugby league. It's so instinctive to put the ball over the line. And it's always so debatable as well because there's always a debate about whether A, did his carrying arm touch the floor and B, did he have momentum anyway? So mm. it's always a question of judgment. And let's just forget it. I mean, as I understand it in rugby union, there's no such rule as a double movement rule, is there? I mean, you've played a bit of rugby union. You just plonk the ball over the line if you can reach it. And for goodness sake, let's do that. Let's change this stupid rule to um, allow tries like Momorowski's to stand. And, you know, I, I, I just got the feeling that, you know, that try being disallowed probably disheartened the Leeds team and disheartened their followers mm. on Friday night. And it was just so disappointing, really, because it would have got Leeds back into the game. No, so, you know, it, it's just crazy, absolutely crazy. Mm. And that's the thing, like, the number of trials we have seen disallowed because as they're reaching out, like, their hand might have brushed a blade oh, of grass. Who knows? Is, yeah. Um, yeah, it's quite ridiculous. And it's a, a rule I'd like to see change, too. And Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're good enough to get to the line before being held. Absolutely. But be as I say, once the referee calls held, that's fine. Make him play the ball mm. at that point. But if the referee hasn't called held, you can score. And the annoying thing, too, now is with the video referee, we're trying to determine whether momentum has taken the player over, a lo- over the line in slow-mo replay. Like, yes. You know, things like that have to be played in, in full of speed. Course. And, um, well, the video referee spell, spends far too much time trying to find reasons to disallow tries, mm. in my opinion. You know, and it, 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 you know I'm, 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 I'm very dubious about the video referee and I have been for a long time. Yeah. But, I, you know, you can almost see it coming, can't you, that, um, you know, this try is going to be disallowed. Gosh, mm. ridiculous. Yeah, the, the more looks they have, the more, uh, I guess, doubt creeps into of your course, mind. Of course, yeah. Uh, in the other matchup, we had uh, Castleford 36 defeated Salford 24 for their first Super League uh, win of the season. Yes, so. and that was the shock result of the round, wasn't it? Mm. Um, but m- maybe not that big a shock, actually, because I thought Castleford had been improving. in mm. their. Pre- I thought they improved against Leeds the previous week. And, um, you know, this, this, this week they, they'd had the very bad news that George Lawler had suffered a seizure while at home in bed at night and um, had, had suffered a a bleed on the brain, and although he seems to be recovering, I'm so glad to say. Um, I think in a strange way, something like that happening sort of gives a bit of motivation. Let's do it for George, I think the Castleford players um, sort of said to each other. And and motivation's a really strange thing, isn't it? What what makes you, what can really motivate you to play well? Um, Sometimes it's not what the coach says, it's what happens around you that, Mm. that that, that does it. And um, I, I thought Castleford were, you know, really did play well. But, but of course, the guy who played particularly well was in a senior who mm. scored four tries, um, several of them great tries, but, but one of them in particular where he beat lots of defenders. And, um, you know, it was, uh, was our League Express try of the week this week. Um, but in a senior um, was, you know, released by Huddersfield and, the Tigers snapped him up. But on Friday night, he looked like a really top-notch winger. Yep. I mean, he's got height and everything on, mm. on his side. He looks a really good winger. Uh, and, of course, his brother's at Hull KR, his twin brother at Lewis Senior, who's, I'm sure, equally good. And, um, you know, those two players, um, for some reason, Huddersfield let them go. I mean, that's up to Huddersfield, isn't it? But, yep. but you know, he really showed his value to the Castleford Tigers on, on, on Friday night and uh, it was an absolute delight to watch. Mm. It's almost like he had spiders on him. No one could get a hand no, on No, no, it's strange. Allergic to getting tackled. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not a bad quality to have, is it, that? Oh, allergic absolutely. to being tackled. That's, 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 that's a, yeah, a good, a, 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 a good statement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll move on to uh, 
I guess the final matchup we'll look at, which is the first matchup of the the round. Wigan forty defeated Lee twelve. Uh, a statement win for Wigan, and perhaps uh, worrying signs for Lee. Or do you think the injuries well, that they've, they've got still got the on, they've still got so many players out, so many key players out, haven't they, Lee? Um, I mean, obviously Edwin Nipapi, John Asiata, uh, and several others are, are currently out of action. Um, and they were well beaten by Wigan. I, I think the problem here is that Wigan are probably just too good for everybody else. Mm. Uh, it was played in a f- front of a full house, but to be blunt about it, Lee never really looked like challenging Wigan, I didn't think. Um, and, and, you know, they are now still with just two points from six games, but they have played some pretty big clubs, haven't they? And they you know, they've, they've played Wigan and they've played St. Helens. So, you know, things haven't been easy for Lee. Um and they the played one game fewer than every other club too. But um, no, I think I, th- I think Lee, are, are, you know, they will come good in the end when they get their players back. But um, they, they, they may be just, you know, their the, the forward pack probably just couldn't quite. I mean, they had um, Robbie Mulhern out as well, and and, and that really um, in, influenced their forward pack negatively, didn't it? Mm. it um, missing him, I think they just liked a bit of drive mm. in the middle of the field. No Tom and Moan either. No I Tom and Moan, so. indeed, no. And that, yeah. you know, so it would have been an absolute surprise if the result had been anything other than what it was, if, yeah. we're, if we're really honest about it. Mm. So, you know, don't panic if you're a Lee fan is probably the best advice i can give yeah we just hope that those players can get back with enough time for them to you know string a few games together and get oh, yeah. a few wins but uh, it's a long season and, it certainly uh, is yes time for them to turn it around yeah and uh, you know a week off this weekend should do them a world of good yeah. in terms of getting some of those players um back hopefully um now we'll move on to some of the news uh the reigning man of steel, Bevan French, has re-signed with the Wigan Warriors for a further four years, taking him through to the end of 2028. Another great uh, re-signing for Wigan. Yeah, I kept reading in the Australian media that the NRL clubs were eyeing him up very carefully and looking possibly to sign him you know, at the end of his contract this year. Um, but he obviously wants to stay at Wigan. And, and I mean, Bevan French... Looks like such a lovely guy, doesn't he? When mm. whenever you see him speaking to, uh, you know, to the camera and so on, he, he's, he's got such a a great demeanour, um, and he's obviously such a vital part of of the Wigan side that it's it's great to see Wigan uh, keeping him on board, isn't it? And um, it looks as though that return to the NRL is is now on the back burner, possibly forever. Who knows? Because mm. uh, he's got a you know four year deal is is going to keep him here for a long time. So um, great for Wigan, great for Super League because he's actually a Super League star, not just a Wigan star. Mm. You know, when he, you know, we, he's the sort of guy who um, Super League ought to be really promoting um, to the maximum, poss- you know, degree really because he is, is you know, is, is, is such an outstanding individual in every significant sense. Mm. And the way he plays, you think, you know, he has the potential to be that uh, household name that oh, yeah. Super League so desperately needs. Absolutely, yes. Um, so, yeah, great to have him locked down for a further four years. I was sort of picking my brain a little bit, thinking which NRL clubs will be most disappointed to hear this news. And as it currently stands, you'd have to think his former club, the Parramatta Eels, well, yes. with Mitch Moses going down. They could yeah, have yeah. greatly benefited from his services. They could have. Um, but yeah. Yeah, he's obviously happy here. And it's interesting uh, seeing some of his comments uh, following the uh, re-signing of his contract. He was saying that he almost had a bit of a feeling that he needed to go back and prove himself in the NRL. But when he played that World Club Challenge game... Beating Penrith, yes. He sort of, you know, came to peace with the idea of staying in the That's Super right. League. Yes, that's really interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, very mean, interesting. With uh, He has every right to feel that way with that performance that he had in the World Club Challenge. No doubt at um, all. Yeah. So, yeah, great news for Wigan. Uh, now, we'll move on to some other transfer whispers. Um, Hull FC recruit Tex Hoy is reportedly being shopped to other Super League clubs around the competition at the moment. Um where do you think he could land up? Is land? Is there any clubs that you think could use Tex Hoy's services right now? Probably London Broncos, I suppose, <laughs> is, is 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 the, the obvious no one. Um, it's interesting. Um, I mean, Tex, Tex Hoy has not been the the worst of the um, Hull team, I don't think, by any means. But mm. um, so you know, one, one wonders 
what the truth is of of of, of those sorts of rumours, mm. and and whether he might leave Hull or not. But I mean, I suppose Hull can't be a happy camp, can it? At the moment, you wouldn't mm-hmm. think. I mean, it's I, you know, I, I can't think of any club you know in recent history that's been on a losing streak where the players have been a happy bunch. Mm. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you perhaps do need to clear players out unfortunately and uh and maybe he's one of them that needs to that needs to go but um we'll have to just wait and see what uh, what 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 eventuates on that mm. one well i guess it all comes down to the quota spots that, that clubs you have that might need filling well or, that's right uh, i think i think i read that warrington might have a quota spot uh, available i just think if he was to sign with a club like warrington um, he'd make a great 14 off the bench or, or a good backup for Well, they let Sam here. Cassiano go at the start of the year, didn't he? He was going to be their, you know, one of their quota players. And I don't think they replaced him, so they probably do still have a spot open. Mm. Um, and yes, I mean, that's always a possibility. And, uh, you know, obviously Warrington at the moment are a much more successful club than Hull. Mm. So, you know, but that obviously suggests that Hull are looking to replace Tex Hoy with another. NRL player, but mm. who that would be, we're not quite sure of, are we? Really? Yeah, well, we'll watch. This it would space. have to be a good defensive player, I would think. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Uh, now, we touched on it a bit earlier, but in the NRL, there's been uh, a lot of drama around the South Sydney Rabbitohs. It's been reported that Jason Demetrio has been given 80 minutes to save his job against Cronulla this weekend, which isn't an easy 80 minutes, is no, it? Really? It's not so. What do you think? Uh, do you think? Do you think he'll be gone after this week, Martin? With uh, all the the drama that's sort of uh, surrounded that club recently. Oh gosh, that's a. I wish I. I wish I was a fly on the wall at South Sydney because, and I'll tell you why. You know, d- during the close season, um, I mean, South Sydney. This this decline in South Sydney started probably just about a year ago, didn't it? Because. About halfway through the NRL season last year, they were sitting on top of the ladder, the NRL ladder. By the end of the season, they were ninth, so they missed out on the playoffs. They'd they'd suffered a an alarming decline in the second part of the season, mm. and that's continued at the start of this year. Now, you know, during the close season, they signed Jack Whiten from Canberra, and I thought, well, you know, that's that's a real I mean, I, I I really admire Jack Whiten. And, you know, he went to South Sydney, he said, because he wanted to play with his good friend, Latrell Mitchell. And I thought, my God, that's going to make a very strong combination. And, um, you know, I would have I would have backed South Sydney to be right up with the leaders again. I thought, you know, that's it's unfair on Canberra because Canberra are losing their best player. And, you know, it's um, great for South Sydney because they're signing a, 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 a super player but it's not worked out Mm -hmm. and you know there's been all this trouble with Luttrell who um, people questioning his commitment to the club I mean you know Phil Gould was sort of in in in, in an Australian um, podcast I think was saying why you know Luttrell you've got to decide whether you really want to carry on playing rugby league and playing for the Rabbitohs Mm -hmm. Um, and Luttrell had he's been banned for three matches for an elbow to the face of Sean Johnson in last week's game against um, New Zealand Warriors. Which was completely unneeded if you've completely, seen Completely, oh, the ridiculous, ridiculous, and he's apologised for that. Um, but, you know, he's... Um, it, Luttrell has got a very high profile off the field, not just because of his um, ability as a rugby league player, but because of his very strong commitment to indigenous rights in Australia, hasn't he? But some people are sort of suggesting that he's so involved with that issue that it's affecting the quality of his game on the field. And, you know, you you, you, you would struggle to argue with that point because it certainly looks to me as though it's probably true. Um, but, you know, he's such a talented player that you sort of think, well, if, if, he, if he can get everything sorted out and, and get that work-life balance... Uh, sorted out properly, then he'll be a great player once again. And um, if I was South Sydney, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't encourage him to leave. As for Jason Demetriou, um he's just in the awful position of, you know, 
I think all the South Sydney fans probably thought like me in the off-season, didn't they? Mm. They all probably thought they were going to have a, a great year. Um, and, you know, to be one and four after five rounds isn't what they expected to. And to see, you know, the, the ladder and South Sydney at the bottom with, you know, two points out of a potential ten, mm. that's not what they wanted. And... Uh, Jason may well have to pay the price. Who knows? Um, but again, if they beat Cronulla this weekend uh, and beat them convincingly, there's nothing you know makes a coach safe more than a win, is yeah, there? Yeah, that's right. So let's let's just see whether he can do it. And I think they've got the buy after yeah, this weekend. And and of course, who would they bring in if um, if if um, Jason did depart? Mm. You know, there's, as I say, there's been this talk of Sam, but. I think Sam would be an absolute idiot to go to South Sydney, you know, immediately, if, even if he had the chance to, to do it. Things are going well for him in Warrington. Um, he's building up his reputation as a coach mm. without necessarily being in the glare of publicity which would accompany him at South Sydney. Mm. So, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd be very foolish to, to um, you know, yield to that temptation. I'd love to uh, be within Sam's inner circle and just to get his thoughts on what's happening. Well, no he doubt somebody will ask this. him this week. Yeah, yeah. He saw this coming to a head, you know, twelve months ago, or yes. a bit. Um, you know, might, might have been eight months ago or so. But yeah, there's a reason why he got out early. Well, they say he didn't. He, he, he just had a disagreement with Jason Dimitri over over the way players were treated, and and he felt that some players, including Latrell and Cody Walker, were treated a bit more lightly compared to some of the others. And the hierarchy at South Sydney decided to um, part company with Sam on, you know, because obviously if you, you can't have your coaching staff fighting, can you? You yeah. can't, you, you just can't tolerate that. But, you know, they're, they're now beginning to see that Sam probably had a point. Mm. And, uh, I think they're beginning to take on board that issue themselves. But what they do about it, it's, uh, you know, my, my old friend Blake Solly, who I used to know very well when he was at the uh, Rugby Football League. He's now the chief chief exec at Souths, and uh, he's got a tough job on his hands. He's got to really, over the next few weeks, Blake will have to earn his money, won't oh, he? No. By making some crucial decisions, and they've got to be the right ones. No, no doubt about that. What do you make of the whispers of Wayne Bennett potentially coming back next season? Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's only got two years as head coach at the Dolphins, and... <laughs> And it's really interesting because if you look at this table, at the other end of the table, at the top of the ladder, is um, the Dolphins yeah. under Wayne Bennett and Christian Wolfe. Now, Christian Wolfe will take over from Wayne next year, mm. but it does mean that Wayne has a, um, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's about 125, isn't he, Wayne? I think, or something <laughs> like that. But Maybe a bit older. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, yeah it, but he's got no desire to stop coaching. He, yeah. he wants to coach until you know until he until he's probably taken out in a box somewhere um and good luck to him he's been a he's a great guy great coach a brilliant man and uh i can see why south's you know regardless of his age might think that he can do the job for them again and he has a reputation for dealing with people uh with those big personalities he knows how to do it doesn't he yeah. he knows how to do it that's that's his enormous strength i mean Wayne is an absolutely brilliant man manager, apparently, um, and he, you know, he, he surrounds himself with other people who can probably do some of the technical stuff on on, on the pitch in the training paddock. Mm. But he's a brilliant man manager, and that maybe is what they need at uh, South Sydney again. Mm. And uh, Demetrio has swung the axe uh, this week. Damien Cook's being dropped. I'm really matchup. amazed at that because mm. I think he was at the top of the tackle count this. Yeah. This last week, if I remember rightly, mm. so you know, I'm, I'm I am surprised at that, but you know, that's uh, a decision he's taken. It'll stand or live by it. And I, I can't help but feel like uh, if Latrell hadn't been suspended, whether things might have been different. Would Latrell have been the the senior player that uh, got dropped? Because I feel like they they did need to swing the axe on a senior player to make a statement, but. I think Cook's probably been the best performer out of all of their... Well, Latrell's Latre actions um, at, the weekend, at the weekend against the Warriors would have said to you, you know, gosh, 
you can't carry on like that. Mm. And you perhaps would have dropped him as much for his own good as anything. Mm. But actually, the, the three match ban is probably doing him a favour. Yep. Because it, it allows him to, um, you know, reassess his situation. And I mean, I think Latrell Mitchell is a great young man. And, and interestingly, um, Peter Vlandis was quoted as saying quite recently that if people really understood what Latrell does, in his private life, then they wouldn't boo him in the way that they do, mm. you know. Because I mean, he obviously, he obviously got some pretty bad treatment at the hands of the Bulldogs fans, didn't he? Yeah. Um, a week or so ago, and um, but he, I mean, I think he's a great kid, and it's 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 good to see somebody who stands up for his what he regards as his people in the way he does. But you know, ultimately, he's paid to play rugby league, so he's got to deliver on that on on the pitch. Mm. No, definitely. Now, uh, over the last week or so, uh, former Catalan's halfback Mitch Pearce, I, I listened to his podcast. Uh, he went on, or oh, it was Matty John's podcast with Cooper Cronk, and he went on and they sort of spoke about his transition uh, into retirement. Um, he touched on the Parramatta Eels rumours that were going around. He said there was no interest. He you know, touched on all the things we did last episode. Sure. He was quite content with retirement. But one of the things I wanted to um, just touch on is he spoke about uh, going sober and his relationship with alcohol throughout his career. And one of the interesting things he said was he didn't uh, go sober until he went over to Catalans and he was in that culture and he said he credits a lot of it to um, Michael Michalorum and Tyrone May. He said both of those boys went sober and had tremendous influences on him um, giving up alcohol and he said ever since he did that he, his football was a lot better um, and yeah I just thought you know better give those boys a, a good rap for you know having that Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Well, the thing that the the thing is, alcohol affects different people in different ways, doesn't it? And uh, Mm. some people, you know, I I used to work with a guy who was a professor at um, the university I used to work at, and he could go out and drink ten pints of beer, and you wouldn't know he'd had him. Yeah. You know, he just was just the same, Mm. just the same guy. Probably an alcoholic, to be perfectly honest, but <laughs> but he could he, he could handle it. Yeah. Whereas some people um, can go out and have a beer, and they start behaving like a lunatic. Mm. Um, and I think um, Mitchell Pierce was more t- towards the latter end of that spectrum than the former. Um, you know, there are some people who 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 just who just lose their inhibitions really when they when they drink, and mm. and that then makes them do silly things and i think mitchell had been caught out a few times in his you know earlier days um doing some dumb things nothing that was illegal or mm. or, or you know but but just a bit stupid really mm. if we're honest about it just just sort of showing himself up a bit and you know it, but uh, you know i think at heart he's a really great guy and um it's good to know that he that he has gone on the wagon and um i admire him for doing it and uh, mm. i mean i've never I've never been a big drinker personally, so you know I think I think if you aren't, it probably benefits you in the long run. Mm. In the long run, and um, you know I think alcohol is obviously a mind-altering drug, and uh, it's best if you lay off it um, if you possibly can. And yeah. uh, oh, you know my admiration for Mitchell for realizing that. Yeah, it makes me wonder whether we will eventually see a bit of a, a movement towards uh, going sober for professional athletes because everyone who does do it they seem to reap the rewards and talk yes. about benefits so yeah but it's hard when our sport it's sort of so closely linked to you know drinking and, and having a few beers after the game so well there's um, nothing wrong with a few beers actually right. you know let, let's not get too puritanical about it yep. there's nothing wrong with a few beers I, mean, it, I love a few beers myself well, of course so. yeah <laughs> I, 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 everybody does and yeah. um you know as long as you don't then start you know causing trouble and and being a pest mm. um and, and 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 behaving like a fool mm. uh there's no problem if if having a beer or two just makes you more sociable that's great isn't yeah. it and yeah. uh I'd, I'd 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 hate to try and stop anybody from doing that if they could handle it without any any trouble mm. absolutely now uh before we get into uh this weekend's matchups i uh, just wanted to ask you do we have any word on whether the bbc is going to broadcast any of the challenge cup games this week <laughs> Yes, I think the BBC are going to broadcast St. Helens versus Warrington yep. and on, on Sunday, and they're going to broadcast Hull KR and Lee Leopards on Saturday. So there will be two matches broadcast, I'm glad to say, although the other two probably won't be. Yep. Um, at this stage, I'm not quite, I'm not absolutely sure. But, um, but yeah, the two biggest games of the round, you know, the 
between last year's finalists on the one hand and uh, Saints and Warrington on the other. Those those games will be on on the mm. BBC, so um, you will be able to watch them if you can't get to the games themselves. Right, that'll be great. Uh, and also, before we get into the games, so we've sort of a quarter of the way through the season. Um, is there anything that you've learnt this far into the season that you didn't know before the season started? No, I think what the season does, it just confirms things for me, not um, <clears throat> rather than, you know, learning new things. I mean, I, I thought I thought right from the start that London Broncos would face a terrible struggle, mm. and they have. I thought from the start that Wigan would um, would would potentially dominate the competition this year, and although they lost at Saints, there's still quite a chance that they might do. Um I wasn't quite sure what would happen to Catalan's Dragons, I must say, because they lost a lot of players, including Mitchell Pearce, who we've just mm. been talking about, and Sam Tompkins, of course. So I wasn't quite sure what effect that would have on them. But I'm really pleased to see that they are, um, you know, that they've coped with losing all those guys. And if anything, they're looking even stronger now. So, mm. you know, that's that's a, a marvellous thing. I wasn't quite sure how Salford would perform, but for the most part, Salford have done extremely well, despite losing Brody Croft and Andy Ackers to Leeds. And um, I wasn't certain how Leeds would perform having acquired those two players. And if anything, I, th- I think the... I mean, Leeds have had some good wins this year, but they've also flattered to deceive and the the Warrington defeat last week was was probably their most disappointing result wasn't it I would mm. say and you know Leeds fans need to um, have success and they're not enjoying it at the moment and um, they need to show a significant degree of improvement don't mm. they I, th- I think I also thought by the way that Wakefield would walk away with the championship and and that looks like it's likely to happen. So we'll see what uh, what 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 comes of that there at the top of the league with three wins from um, six games. Sorry, six three wins from three games alongside Witness, interestingly enough, and uh, Sheffield Eagles, mm. who I wouldn't have expected to be up there. Certainly not in Witness's case, but great to see that. Mm. But, you know, great old club Witness. Yeah. So you know, it's 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 going to be competitive to see who who the runner-up is to Wakefield, I think. Mm. But I, I don't see anybody beating Wakefield. And any players that have shocked you this season? Shocked me? Um, you mean by playing extremely playing well? Extremely well, yeah. Well, you don't mean uh, by doing something daft? No, no, uh, no. no. <laughs> we won't, we won't no. bring that up for the players if there is. <laughs> no, well, uh, I've been very impressed by young Leon Hayes at Warrington Wolves. That You know, he's, he's doing well. I've been very impressed by young... Amila Hanley uh, on the wing at Lee, um, who's who's showing. I mean, when Lee get all their best players back, I think they'll create a, a lot for him. I've been very impressed by Adam Swift on the wing at Huddersfield, but then again, I thought I would be, mm. you know, because I do rate him very highly, as I've um, as I've said before. Um, so, so there are some some players who have have really shone. I think um, Alex Wormsley, you know, he's thirty four now. Is Alex? But he's still playing extremely, extremely well. Um, you know, so, uh, somebody said to me a few weeks ago that Alex is very near the end of his career, but you wouldn't necessarily know it from the way he's playing, I don't think. Mm. You know, I thought his game against Wigan was absolutely superb. So so there are, you know, quite a few players who um, who I think are doing well. Mike Sneed is, uh, he's the top of our um Albert Goldthorpe medal table from some of his performances this year mm. so far has done extremely well. And no, I think um, I think there have been some very strong performances, um, you know, with a lot of younger players looking as though they're going to make, make the grade. Mm. And uh, I was going to say, Ash Hanley, the human highlight reel, it oh, seems this gosh, year. He's yeah, some yeah. significant uh, Well, again, tries. he's always been a really great winger. We, we're not yeah. short of good wingers, are we, in... Um, in, in, in Super League this year. Mm. But then again, there are some very good ones in the NRL as as, as well, aren't there? And, yeah. um, you know, you, as we saw in that um, that that great game uh, last Thursday between the Storm and the Broncos, yeah. which just 
came out. You just came out on the wrong side uh, of yeah. that result, Jake. Yeah, and it was uh, like as a Broncos fan, still had to be proud of their performance uh, going down by two points after losing Adam Reynolds and not having Reece Absolutely, Walsh or Payne yes. Haas. I thought that yeah, was a yeah. great effort. Um, Ezra Mam had a great game. He did. What it seemed a, like the, the the ball was just falling his yes. way every time. Some great. Uh, his shots. anticipation was perfect, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. Hopefully they can turn it around and get some of those players back. I think Reese Walsh is back this week, so yeah, yeah. He might be wearing some headgear, perhaps. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, th- that's what they say, don't they? Mm, so, um, yeah, really great to see, and um, yeah, it's been an exciting start to the season. Hopefully, it, it keeps going uh, at this rate. It's yes. been awesome. Um, we'll have a look at our Challenge Cup fixtures this weekend uh, and get your quick picks, Martin. Uh, in the first match up, we have Hull KR taking on Lee in the uh, rematch of. The Wembley final. Well, actually. you would imagine that Hull KR would get the revenge, wouldn't you? Because they've mm. got not many injuries, and Lee have st- are still carrying, you know, all of those injuries that we've been talking about. So, um, I would say this looks reasonably nailed on for Hull KR um, to get through to the semi-final, and uh, I think they're determined to go one better this year, aren't they? And mm. actually win the competition. So, you know, good luck to them and good luck to Lee. I just hope it's a great game. Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, we've got the uh, Catalans taking on the Giants. Hard to, hard to see a result other than a Catalans win. Mm. Um, the Giants are a funny team, un- unpredictable in many ways. And I thought they played extremely well at Hull, of course, at the weekend. Mm. But at the Catalans, they'll meet a completely different um, defensive side, won't they? And uh, uh, they certainly won't score 50 points. And they'll mm. be... You know, they'll do well to get into double figures against the Catalans, but it should be a good game. Mm. They've been a bit up and down like Leeds have been, I guess, to start the season. Win, mm. loss, win, loss, it seems to be the, oh, yeah, yeah. the theme. Uh, then we have Cass taking on Wigan. Hard to see any result other than Wigan winning this mm. one, isn't it? Very hard to see indeed, I'm afraid. Mm. Even with the improvement that Cass made over the weekend. Yes. Uh, I mean, hopefully they put up a, a strong fight and it's a, a nice competitive match, but mm. yeah, we'll see. And then uh, the big one, Saints taking on Warrington. Well, again, you'd imagine Saints winning that, wouldn't you? You know, uh, Warrington have improved this year, but have they improved enough to challenge Saints? I'm not quite sure that they have. Mm. Um, I think Saints will be looking very much to Wembley this year and uh, I just can't see them losing this but I'm sure Warrington will give them a pretty good challenge and uh, you know it, it wouldn't it, you know it wouldn't surprise me absolutely if Warrington won but I would be pretty surprised mm. you know I'm, I'm, I, I think um, probably Saints by about 10 or 12 points in this game. Yeah, and it's uh, it's going to be tough for Warrington with Saints. They're going to be desperate to make up for that loss in mm. France last weekend. So, um, But if they do win, God, it'll be a, a big tick on uh, Sam Burgess's resume. Oh, gosh, it would, uh, yes. That would win. that would make South Sydney want him even more, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so, but keep the hands off, for goodness yeah, sake. That's yeah. right. Well, well, hopefully he'll stay uh, for the duration of his contract. He's got two years we touched on, so yeah. um, who wants to be under that NRL media spotlight in Australia. Yeah, be absolutely. In um, anything else you want to touch on? Well, mate, one of the things we... I was just thinking about, yeah, one, one thing I was just thinking about was, um, you know, I'm sort of planning ahead here a, a bit, but next year's World Club Challenge, we, we'd, there's, there's all this talk, isn't it, about Penrith being um, a shoe in for the Las Vegas trip next year mm. uh, to play an, an NRL, you know, first round game there. And, of course, Penrith are still the favourites to win the um, NRL competition this year. Mm. If they do, uh, what will happen to the World Club Challenge? Because they'll be going there probably to play a league game, not a World Club Challenge game. So when would the World Club Challenge, if it occurs, fit in next year if it's if it involves Penrith? Mm. Just an interesting uh, example of the need to coordinate the two seasons, yeah. you know, in the northern and southern hemispheres, so that big games like the World Club Challenge don't fall by the wayside. And I'm not saying it will do, but it needs to be very carefully planned next year, so that whichever whichever team wins the NRL competition, even if it, because of course we'll probably have the four teams decided that will go to Las Vegas before the season ends, won't we? And the the good thing about what happened this year was that the four teams didn't actually include Penrith, so Penrith were free to play the World Club Challenge in England. Yeah. But um, if the four teams do include whichever team 
wins the competition, then it makes the World Club Challenge planning quite difficult. Because mm. that's the thing, like logistically, uh, how much notice do you want to give teams and fans that they're going to be a, you know, a part of that Vegas Absolutely. Fixture? Well, quite a lot, don't you? Yeah, because, you know... You, yeah, the you fans want to need to save year. up to go, to go there. Mm. And, and of course, what year. they want to do next year is have... They had 40,000 this year, they want 50,000 next year. That's right. Or more. Yeah, very interested to see what teams they pick and where they they do completely change all the teams or whether mm. it might be like a you know the Broncos or the Rabbitohs feature again um, yeah we'll see what happens but mm. yeah I, I'd like to see it if they had planned something and then they had like a plan B say alright if Panthers make the World Club Challenge then this team will slot in but then yes. again it's not giving them much notice is no it? So, I don't think the Panthers would go for that one no um, yeah interesting to see what happens mate um, now before we sign off today uh, we will remind our viewers and listeners to hit uh, subscribe if you are listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube um, grab yourself a copy of the Rugby League World Magazine or League Express uh, head along to totalrl.com forward slash shop yes um, actually there is one other thing I was uh, we, we ought to mention and it's a young man called Sian or I don't know how you pronounce his first name Sian Tyra I think who scored the first six tries for Oldham in their six, 62, six first six <laughs> oh, tries wow. uh, for Oldham against Hunslet o- yeah. Oldham won 62 nil and uh, he scored their first six tries wow. so that's an amazing achievement isn't it so he must have um, been playing in the outside back so yes he was a winger yeah, yeah yeah and uh they scored 11 tries in total, but he scored the first six of them. So he was our player of the week this year, in, this week in League Express. So congratulations to him. Yep. I mean, Oldham looked far too strong for League One, which they're playing in at the moment. Mm. Um, and I, as I say, just I, I wish they'd decided to merge the championship and League One this year, but it would have been a better test for them. But anyway, yeah. great for him, great for them, and uh, congratulations to that young man. Double hat-trick, how good's that? That's Not awesome. bad. Have you ever scored one? No, no. no. I've scored a hat-trick uh, when I was a bit of a young fella, but uh, yeah. Well, you still so, are, oh, mate. You still are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the knees are feeling it, though, yeah. after playing rugby league all my life. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll often walk through a quiet hallway and you can just hear my ankles or knees clicking. Yeah. I'm like, ah. Uh, Good old contact sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll show the, the, <laughs> the front cover of the magazine for this month uh, and the League Express front the League cover Express. here. Both available in, well, League Express in the shops and both available on subscription by going to our website. Yeah, perfect. All right, mate, we'll wrap it up here and do it all again next week. Thanks a lot, Jay. Awesome. Cheers, Thanks, mate. mate.